October 2019 Indigenous Pink Lightning Webinar. A lightning webinar takes a quick 15 minutes to look at a topic around breast health or breast cancer. I'm your host, Dr. Gaylin Richards, and it is my pleasure to welcome you, and it is my privilege to serve as the American Indian Cancer Foundation Screen Our Circle Program Nurse Specialist. Please take a minute at the end of the webinar to fill out the evaluation you'll find in the chat box. Uh, we want to know what you think of this format. We'd like to hear about other topics you'd like me to present. And your name will be entered in a drawing for Indigenous Pink Prizes. So let's begin. Imagine a world without cancer. The mission of the American Indian Cancer Foundation is to eliminate the cancer burdens on American Indian and Alaska Native people through improved access to prevention, early detection, treatment, and survivorship. Our topics for today will take a step back and look at what is cancer, what causes cancer, and who gets cancer. Then we're going to really circle in on breast cancer risk factors, signs and symptoms, and we'll end today with a brief slide about what does it mean when they call me back. What is cancer? It's well over a group of over a hundred diseases. In our body, we have cells. Think about skin cells, liver cells, breast cells, prostate cells. Those cells are very specialized that live in an area of our body and they have special jobs and they have a lifespan. They know how long that they will survive. What happens when a risk factor for cancer comes into the cell and changes it is that they begin to grow out of control with no rules whatsoever and they interfere with the normal function of those cells in that area. They also don't become mature so they cannot do their job. You may have many, many, many more than you should have, like a white blood cell in leukemia, but they don't do their job. They compete with normal cells for food and for oxygen, thus starving the normal cell. And they, again, they don't understand their lifespan. There's been interesting studies looking at, is there cancer treatment where we can cause cancer cells to die? Um, tell them when their life is over, and that's, those studies continue, very interesting. We know in cancer that things like breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, form a lump or a mass, and we call that a tumor, but we also have cancers that do not have masses or tumors, uh, like leukemia, and those types of cancers arise from those cells in our body where uh, blood cells are made, like red blood cells, white blood cells. One of the biggest challenges around cancer is that cells can break off and they can travel through the blood system, the lymphatic system, or just by local extension to nearby uh, body parts, and they can set up residence in that area and begin to spread. What causes cancer? Well, there's external factors like the use of tobacco, exposure to chemicals. Uh, maybe someone is in a manufacturing job where they're exposed to chemicals or in mining where it's possibly asbestos. Radiation, and when we think of radiation, we think of the large uh, radiation accidents that have happened at the nuclear uh, uh, sites like Chernobyl or the, uh, the incident that happened in Japan. And also young people get a particular kind of cancer where they get chest radiation. And it's been shown that 30, 40 years later, they may be at a higher risk uh, women for breast cancer. Also infectious organisms like human papillomavirus, that's responsible for over 99% of the cervical cancer. There's also internal factors like our own hormones. As women, during our reproductive years, we produce estrogen uh, normally, that's a normal uh, hormone we produce, but during our cycle, the estrogen level rises and it may cause a small change in a breast cell that under the right circumstances could lead to something more serious. 
We also have inherited mutations. We know the most about the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 uh, and their impact on breast cancer risk. Also, just getting older, age is a risk factor for most kinds of cancer. These factors can act together or in sequence to, to start that development of a cell that is changed or mutated that could lead to a cancer. This graph is very interesting and I, I included it because I want you to see that causes of cancer death in the United States, about two thirds of the causes of death are related to tobacco use, sedentary lifestyle, uh, diet and obesity. Those are uh, health behaviors that we, as we become more informed and aware, we could change and really cause a drop in the overall number of cancer deaths uh, in the United States. Who gets cancer? Anyone. Ch children to old age. And again, as I said, our risk increases as we get older with most cancers occurring in people over age 55. Now, for breast cancer, it is the most common type of cancer in women if you exclude skin cancer. And over a lifespan, a woman has a one in eight chance of being diagnosed. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in women. Only lung cancer is, has a higher death rate. We know a lot about breast cancer, its risk factors, how it uh, functions and operates, but we're still not completely clear on the cause. So what we do support is early detection and mammography is our absolute best tool. The technology of mammography has changed and become even better, easier, quicker. And with early survival, there's a 98%, possibly even 100% survival. And that's what we really want. Find that breast cancer very early, uh, where it's the most treatable, where women will survive and go on to lead a healthy life. Most breast cancers do happen in women over 50, but of course we know that younger women also do get breast cancer. That's why we need to be informed and aware. The good news is that 3.8 million women are living and surviving and thriving after a breast cancer diagnosis here in the United States. Over the last several decades, the death rate has been dropping, uh, and that has to do with advances in early detection and advances in treatment. It's estimated that over 375,000 women's lives have been saved during the last couple of decades. Uh, and again, when we think about the impact of breast cancer, it's not just the woman, it's her family, her community. Uh, there's really a loss there. So we want, again, women to be aware, informed, engage in regular screening. And I talked a little bit about how the technology for mammograms has evolved. And the 3D mammograms are now available. They're not available everywhere yet, but uh, they're a three-dimensional image of our breasts, which is a three-dimensional structure. Some of the early technology for mammograms, they were very good, but it was like taking an x-ray of your arm. It was a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional structure, and that was some of the challenges of those early days. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is treatment for breast cancer is no longer cookie cutter. It is really advancing very quickly. It used to be that someone who was diagnosed had kind of a standard regime, particularly around chemotherapy. Now we know we can look at that individual breast cancer and test it to see which chemotherapy medications will work or which won't work, thus saving some women from receiving very strong medication uh, that they might not need or might not be effective for them. There's also projects like Indigenous Pink. That's a national project of the American Indian Cancer Foundation. It's going on right now during October, raising awareness, uh, helping women get informed. So wear your pink proudly this month. Check with your clinic, are they having an event? There's lots going on, lots of fun happening. So again, wear your pink proudly, 
check with your clinic, are they having an event, or maybe come up with something that you'd like to do around Indigenous pink. Mammograms are important, and I have these two graphs to show you what our current mammography rates are, and for American Indian and Alaska Native women, about 70% do report a mammogram in the last two years, and that's great. But the public health goals of the United States are a mammography rate above 80%. So we've got some work to do, and we can do it together. I've talked about survival, and we know that a mammogram can find changes in the breast at least two years before it could be felt on an exam. So by regular mammograms, we're finding breast cancer at its most treatable, most survivable stage, and you can see those survival rates are very, very good in those early stages. American Indian and Alaska Native women, about 30 to 35% do present with a little bit later stage, and we really want to move that needle and support women uh, so they will get mammograms so we can say that all women are going to absolutely survive this disease. A little bit about risk factors. Now, on the left side of your screen is the uh, ACAF breast infographic. It's a wonderful uh, educational tool, and if you're not familiar with it, please contact us and we can get some out to you. But you notice it kind of is our review, our one in eight women over a lifespan. Our risk factors are we're women, men do get breast cancer, but their risk is one in 1,000, and it's thought to be associated with a change in the genes, a genetic mutation. So we're female, we're getting older, our family history is is probably the next most important thing. And remember, our risk for breast cancer passes down through both the mother's side and the father's side. And also breast density, which is a little bit of an emerging risk factor. Now, there's our breast anatomy on the right-hand side, and I just wanna do a quick review. In our each breast, there are 12 to 15 glands, and those glands are where milk is produced when we're nursing our children. They drain down through a duct system uh, to the nipple area. There's also connective tissue in the breast that helps support and shape, and then fatty tissue. And then many of us have, might have some fluid-filled cysts that are, are not a risk of any kind. So here's a three-dimensional structure, and that glandular tissue has been recognized as something that might be a risk factor for breast cancer because it may interfere with good imaging. So a little bit more about breast density. Many states are passing legislation that when a woman gets a mammogram, this information will be included in the report so she knows something about her breast density. And you can see from the series of uh, film pictures that the more density you have, the breast starts to look whiter and whiter. That's that glandular tissue. And it's harder for that mammogram to take a good picture. They work better on breasts where there's more fatty tissue. As we get older, that glandular tissue tends to shrink a little bit and be, re uh, be replaced with fatty tissue. And that may be why mammograms tend to maybe work a little bit better in older women with a little bit higher um, uh, life-saving uh, advantage in older women. So research continues on breast density and a, you may be asked to do some additional tests like a 3D mammogram. There really isn't um, established uh, recommendations for a woman who has high breast density. So it's something to talk about with your doctor. What's best for me uh, to get a really good mammogram that will give all the information that is necessary. Here's our risk factor review. We're women, we're getting older. We may have a very strong family history. And just so know your family history, understand that our breast cancer risk can pass both through our mother's side and our father's side. Of course, if you've had previous history of breast cancer, you need to sit down with your doctor and figure out what's your best plan of care and prevention. Hormones, we've talked about this a little bit, that estrogen level rises, 
So if you started your periods earlier uh, in age, before the age of 12, or you went through menopause late, like uh, closer to 55, you had more cycles where that estrogen level rises and could have caused a small change in a breast cell that might go on under the right circumstances to become more serious. A few years back, a long-term women's health study was released that showed a relationship between um, after menopause, women who took hormone replacement therapy, if they took it for more than five years, it did confirm that their risk was a little higher. Now, some women, when they go through menopause, they really have a lot of symptoms and they do need medication to help with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And you'll wanna, if, if you're a woman who's experiencing uh, symptoms of menopause and they can be uncomfortable, talk with your doctor because you may wanna choose a medication a low dose, and just for as long as you need it, and then come off of it. The other thing that happens after menopause is we're not producing estrogen, but if we're overweight, our fat cells produce something that acts a little bit like estrogen. So we wanna to try to keep our weight in a normal range and get regular exercise. I've talked about uh, when uh, we have genetic changes or mutations, and that, can happen in about 7% of the women. But remember, fully 70% of women have no risk factors for breast cancer, except being female and getting older. Here's our symptoms. This is another infographic from ACAF, and it's a really good tool. So again, if you're interested in getting some of those, uh, please contact us. Early breast cancer usually has no symptoms and does not cause pain. But if you um, are a little bit later, you might notice a lump or thickening in the breast or under one arm, or a change in the size or shape of one of the breasts. Nipple discharge in one of the breasts is something to be reported to your doctor, or if the nipple uh, inverts or goes in. Rash or skin changes around the nipple, or the skin of the breast looks similar, it's dimpled, it looks like an orange. That's a particular kind of breast cancer. You may notice that one breast feels hot or swollen or inflamed, or one of the veins in one of the breasts seems more prominent and bigger. You may even have an open sore. All of these things you should really take to your doctor, get an exam, and go forward uh, with any tests that are recommended at that time. Little bit about prevention. This is how we take care of ourselves so we can be there for our family and our community. If you're of um, breast, you know, if you have children, consider breastfeeding. It reduces your risk significantly. Keep your weight in a normal range and get regular exercise, whether that's walking or swimming or gardening or shoveling snow if you're from the cold countries. We can get regular exercise. Limit your alcohol use. It's been shown that alcohol increases that estrogen level. Get regular mammograms and breast exams from your doctor. And I'll leave you with this. Following a mammogram, about 10% of women will be asked to come back for additional imaging. The radiologist wants to look more closely at an area in one of the breasts. If you do get a call, it's important to have those tests but ask questions, discuss it with your doctor. If you need support, ask a friend to go with you or reach out to organizations like the American Indian Cancer Foundation for more information. Remember, taking care of ourselves so we can be there for our family and our community. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please fill out the evaluation posted in the Zoom chat box for a chance to win an Indigenous Pink Prize. Thank you.